Well, good morning, Hanover Saints, and in the midst of this sacred hour that we spent together, and from this place that for all of us, so many of us, is a sacred place, we come together for worship. And today we're mindful of where the Christian journey is marked, is marked by the waters of baptism. So we will celebrate and wade into the waters of Jesus' baptism this very day, and we will remember the many ways that God renews us and restores us, the many ways that God cleanses us. And so my friends, let us rejoice in these, the waters of our baptism, knowing and believing that this water was poured out by our God for the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life. Amen, and now let us worship God. Christ our 
And now, as we um, turn to a time of reading of the scripture, let us quiet our hearts and minds, and let us hear God's word to us on this day. Today's reading comes from the book of Mark. It's chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descended like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. I want to be like Jesus. I want to get baptized in a river. But you know, it's too late for me. I've already been baptized, and in our tradition, you only get baptized once. I want to be like Jesus because I want to get dunked. You see, I was sprinkled, and I was sprinkled in a very proper Episcopalian kind of way. And so to this day, my greatest dream, someday, some day to be a part of a full immersion baptism. I want to get waist deep in a river and I want to dunk someone. I just love the symbolism. The water in that river is like God's love and when we allow it, God completely surrounds us, consumes us, envelops us in love from head to toe. And then to be baptized in a river, flowing, rushing, turbulent waters that remind us that like the flow of the water, we too are on a journey, constantly in motion. And like the water in a river that always returns to the sea, so too our journey of life always returns to God. So someday, before I meet my Maker, I want to head to the Brandywine with a band of the faithful. I want to walk hand in hand into the river with a new child of God until we're waist deep in that water. We'd say prayers, prayers to commend and bless and cleanse, and we'd create a covenant with congregation, family, and God. 
And you know, even if the heavens don't open up and a voice doesn't come from heaven, everyone would remember that special moment forever. Someday. Someday. And so I wonder. I wonder what it would be like. What would it be like to have been at Jesus' baptism, or our own for that matter? But what would it have been like had we experienced it from under the water? Well, you wondered, what's it like to be underwater? Well, guess what? You are underwater. And so welcome to this, the wonderful underwater world of Hanover's baptismal font. Wait till you tell your family and friends about this one. So is everyone feeling okay down there? I, I'd give you a moment to catch your breath, but um, I'm not sure how helpful that would be right now, so I'll get right to it. I figure our time is rather limited, and so now I would imagine it's a little disorienting. Your vision is very likely blurry and shaky, or maybe it's perfectly clear and calm. Now, if the water is dirty or muddy or rushing in a river, it will definitely be harder to see. One thing I can only imagine when the water gets troubled is that it becomes very hard to know where you are or where you're going. But troubled waters, they can be a good thing. In the Gospel of John, we hear the story of a man who was paralyzed and had been lying by the side of a pool for 38 years. And he could never get into the pool when the waters were troubled, because that was the time when healing happened, and it was God who troubled the waters. And so when the man took Jesus' advice and he entered the troubled waters, he was healed, and then he went away professing his faith in Christ. Sometimes God acts in the troubled and turbulent times to bring about healing and reconciliation. Let us remember, let us remember that in this coming week, that in the midst of our troubled world, God will prevail. And then there's the sound. I can imagine my voice is muffled and not so easy to hear how hard it is when we're under troubled waters to hear each other, much less to hear God. Just like it's difficult to see God in the troubled times, so it is equally difficult to hear God in the midst of turmoil. So in this time of great challenge, let us commit ourselves to being ones who help calm the water by seeing and hearing the divine spark in every child of God. Oh yeah, and one more thing, one more thing about full immersion baptism. Even if it's only for a few seconds, being underwater can't help but make us realize that we are not in control in that moment we become deeply aware of how dependent we are upon others. The ones who hold our hands as we sink into the water, and the ones who raise us back up and out, cleaned, cleansed, and renewed. Most of all, when we are immersed in the love of God in these waters, it reminds us and it reassures us of the one who is in control, God. Well, I guess now it's probably about time to let you up and out of the water. It's been a long stretch down there. I hope everyone's okay. But even if it was a little bit uncomfortable, I hope you felt nothing less than the all-encompassing love that God has for you. And may that love sustain you while you are in troubled waters, and may it deliver you to the promised day of peace. Okay, you can come out now.
And now as we prepare to turn to a time of prayer, I have a couple of prayer requests today. Um, in particular, we ask you to lift up, as I'm sure you already are, lift up in your hearts and in your prayers all those who are experiencing in some way um, and suffering in some way from the coronavirus, um, particularly those who are ill, those who are being uh, who are treating those who are ill and those who have lost family members. And we also, particularly in this time, lift up prayers for our government, for our elected leaders, and for our nation as we prepare to inaugurate Joe Biden as our 46th president. And would you now join with me in prayer? Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, sound learning, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance. Make us who come from many nations with many different languages, build together a community bound in hope. Defend and protect those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government and give to them the spirit of wisdom that there might be justice and peace in our land. 
And when times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We remember that it was you, O God, who made us in your image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And through our struggle and through our conf confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth, that all people may serve you in harmony. And we ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so, my friends, we have been to the water. We have been cleansed, we have been renewed, and we have received those blessings by the grace of our God, through the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and through the community and the communion and the fellowship, the Holy Spirit. And so now, go in peace and enter the waters, and may they be troubled by our God as they heal and deliver and bring peace. Amen.